Hey guys, it is Jarrett here with the amazing Emily Bet Ricard, star of Arrow, talking all about the amazing Elicity episode that happened last week, the amazing Flash episode that's happening this week, and we're gonna play a little game called Get to Know Emily. Whee! Check it out. We're coming off a massive Elicity episode. Oh yeah. Huge shipping moments. What was your first reaction when you read the scene where Oliver kills the Count effectively for Felicity? I was I was kind of in distress because there's so there's so much action that happens before it and so much so much fear in Felicity that I I don't know it it wasn't so much of of save me or or don't save me as much as it was like you cannot do this you just can't do this for yourself and I think that I think that there was just so much going on that it just goes down to survival mode and and taking care of someone else and what needs to be done and I think she you know, as soon as he kills him, and she feels sort of guilty about that afterwards, but she's safe. I, it, the fact that she didn't, that she said to him, don't kill him for me, was like the sweetest, most touching moment, I mm -hmm. felt like. I mean, what is your take on their relationship as it stands right now? Oh my gosh, complicated. I just think, I just think it can't not be complicated because they're saving the city every night. And, and Diggle too, I mean, that, that whole trio is a complicated relationship. Specifically to theirs, I think there is like a very loving bond, and and I mean, it just it just gets stronger with every you know every script. It just gets stronger whether or not it you know is going to become a romantic relationship or if it will be termed Alicity, Alicity for life. Uh, <laughs> the four. Um, I, I mean, I'm not sure yet. I can't guarantee anything. I mean, people have heard me say that before, but they really don't. Tell me anything, so the questions I don't answer, I really just don't really answer to. <laughs> well, one thing we do know is that next week introduces Barry Allen, aka The Flash, who's a huge part of Felicity's storyline. What ex what are you excited for fans to see with his arrival in Starling City? I think everyone will be really excited. I mean, we're introducing a new DC comic character, a loved DC comic character, which is huge, and Grant does it phenomenally. You know, he. He is so smart, both their characters are really smart, and he plays Barry extremely well, and really fun. And their relationship, Felicity and Barry specifically, is like a total IQ match. So, when they're together, it's just a genius explosion, like Einstein's created two little children, and they're like in a room together, so, is with there, Spark. Is there like a like competitive edge with the two of them, like, I'm smarter, or do they recognize sort of like a kindredness in one another? There's a recognition, because because Felicity, and Felicity does say, you know, it's not her, there's some things that aren't her expertise, which we never really get to see that side of her, and she, you know, she needs Barry's expertise. We're really seeing her jump into the fray. I mean, she's been kidnapped, she's been held hostage. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. season one, you're getting some action, the elevator sort of swing, then in yeah. earlier this season, jumping out of windows. How fun has the action element been <laughs> for you? Jumping out of planes, yeah. jumping out of windows. <laughs> like, oh man, my life is so boring comparison to Felicity. It's like, I think about what I do and I'm like, oh, I'm on this plane, am I gonna jump out of it? No. <laughs> um, it's really fun. I mean, doing all that stuff is just a whole, I mean, I'm, you know, this is my first big role and doing things like that is just a dream come true and and having her do those things really starts to build you know a step up for her I mean like I said about the fearlessness in season one and like getting through that and still chipping away at it because your fear doesn't go away you just have to face it every single time so facing it doesn't make your fears go away no matter what anybody says like they'll still kind of be there but I think it, it helps her grow makes her become a more three-dimensional character absolutely as you had said, this really is your first major role, mm -hmm. and there is sort of like a absence of a lot of information about you on the internet. So I thought we would play a little game yeah. called Let's, Let's Get to Know Emily. I, mean, I, I can probably answer a few of those. Okay, so first question. Okay. When did you know you first wanted to be an actor? I was young, like really, really young. I think, and, and I, I sort of tried not to say this, but I admitted it the other day. I used to recite every single line from every single Mary Kate Nash movie ever made when I was like two or three. I was talk. I talked really, really early, and my parents would just throw me in front of the TV because I would talk all the time. And like I was in sports, and you know I did every sport imaginable, that sort of thing. But I loved movies, and I loved television, and I loved plays and theater. And my parents, both doctors, psychologist, surgeon, you know, that's not acting or anything. So there was always this sort of um, 
I was allowed to be in acting classes and I was allowed to be in musical theater and I was allowed to, you know, be in dance. But I was not allowed to go get an agent until after school, after middle school, after high school, after you switch schools, after blah, 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 blah. So I did all that. And here I am. Just out of curiosity, what is your favorite Mary Kate and Ashley movie? It takes two. I mean, yeah. Must be. Yeah. Okay. And and what was that series called where they would like solve crime by sundown? Oh yeah, the <gasps> like first class private eyes, right? It's so good. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to cry. It was so good. I used to love that show. Is probably your biggest professional regret that you're so young you were unable to be in a Mary-Kate and Ashley movie? Yeah. Do you think that you and Harry Potter? Because I wanted to audition for Harry Potter. My parents were like, hey, I don't know. Who would, you, who would you have played in your fantasy world in Harry Potter? Well, I would never take it away now from Emma, but Hermione was the audition, was the role that wow. was out on the internet. Yep. <laughs> when the internet was like brand new, they go mad. What would you say is a secret talent of yours? Definitely not choreographed dancing. Okay. But, you know, get me on a dance floor at night or in my apartment with the loud music on. Mm -hmm. Not so bad. Um, secret talent. I'm a really good whistler. Yeah? Yeah. Can I get a little of that? What do you want to hear? I mean, listen, dealer's choice. <laughs> Your very first celebrity crush? Um, Justin Timberlake, Ashton Kutcher, Topher Grace. So anybody <laughs> who wore a trucker hat in the 90s? Yeah, <laughs> you wore a trucker hat in the 90s. I think my first, um, I could be wrong, but I think my first, because if you mention somebody else, I might have that too. Oh, Chad Michael Murray too, okay. One Tree Hill. Um, I was talking about this yesterday. Ashton Kutcher in Seventeen Magazine in his wife theater, with his arms up, hanging up that pole with the red background was my first poster. And I was so embarrassed that I took it out of the magazine that I put it in my closet so my parents couldn't see it. So every time I opened my closet, it was like, that's a good shirt on the wall. Dream professional co-star. Juliet Binoche. What's the most Canadian thing about you? Sorry, what's the most Canadian thing about you? I wore flannel today. <laughs> and I wear a lot of hats. I have uh, a huff hat in here, and I have a toque in here as well, which is a beanie. But um, I was told specifically not to wear a hat okay. in interviews. So your <laughs> so your clothes are the most Canadian thing about Probably. you? Probably. I mean, I, you know, I could get international. You know. <laughs> I shop here too. <laughs> it's actually from here. Um, I say A. Um, Throwing, you know, the border collie in the back of the RAV4 and going to do a hike at the grass grind is like a pretty typical summer I understood activity. Like, I understood like three of those words. <laughs> <laughs> That's like one of the most Canadian things you can do. Hey, y'all want to go up to Squamish, throw the border collie in the back of RAV4A? Eh? Like, it's just like, you know, there you go.